It's Friday morning in Helsinki and it's time for Creative Mornings. I'm Maria, this is Johannes and I'm going to talk about empathy today. So, welcome. So much has happened since that video, I can't believe it. It's like, I, uh, I was amazed, I couldn't recognize myself from there. It's like, wow, what? So, yeah, it's been a journey. Um, basically, we were starting this together, and then my desire to travel the world was greater than the desire, unfortunately, to organize this event with Johannes. <laughs> so um, I went off traveling and looking for my path. And here I am. It's very different reality right now from that two years ago. And I'm, I'm very <coughs> pleased to be here, you know. It's, it's so Wow, it's like so dense when I feel you. It's amazing. Wow. Um, I'm going to talk about empathy. And as I now work with bodies and mind and uh, helping people to feel their bodies more and uh, feel their feelings more, I use a lot of empathy in my work. Um, to me, empathy is a direct connection from heart to another heart. Essentially, when we are um, relating with other human beings, it's a very delicate thing, you know. We are asking, if I offer my heart to you, will you take care of it? <sighs> will you take care of it with tenderness? Or am I going to be exposed to something that I don't want to be exposed? And also empathy. <sighs> we are asking basically, are you going to be there if I drop into my darkest pitch of sorrow? And if I really collapse, will you still be there for me? You know, are we going to be together? Or what if, what if I achieve something that you so wanted to have, you know? Can we still be friends? Can we still have this connection? And then on the other end, like when empathy really becomes joyous and wonderful, when there's excitement, when there's like, yeah, let's do this together, then it's really easy, it's light. But when we go into the dark, side um, can be challenging at times and then our heart is really needed How, and our heart is really needed to open empathy happens in silence in the silence of our direct experience in our compassion. I have, um, I just read um, a quote from Rachel Rahman, who is a therapist and a writer. And she said really nicely, I can't really quote her directly, but the idea was this. Empathy happens in silence. Not the kind of silence that includes um, some kind of unspoken criticism or <coughs> withdrawal from the situation, but real presence. And in this kind of silence, we can really heal and we can really reach our power because this is the real human connection. Hmm. So, as an idea, Empathy is very simple, heart to heart, 
We all know that. What about in practice? You know, it can be very challenging at times when we are busy, when we have the same thing coming up over and over again with the same person. It's very easy to be empathetic when, you know, you meet for once or you meet for twice and but then when it's more more than more than maybe two times then it kind of starts to get a little bit hard but there again you know just returning back to the source where we came from really coming from the silence and i think the empathy starts with our own heart and really getting intimate with our own heart first because from that intimacy something intimate can build up with another person. But it's not safe to throw our heart out there and reach out and you know say like I'm not complete, I'm not perfect, can you still stay with me? But sometimes doing what is not safe is the only way to say stay really safe because there's no other way anymore. There's no way to stay closed if you really want to reach out and live this life, you know. So empathy is, um, empathy is born in freedom. And by this freedom I mean the freedom of mind, the freedom to really let go of the judgment, the illusion, the want to change the other person. Because we don't have to take care of change. Life is change in itself. So we don't have to take care of anybody's change, you know. Life is floating and we are with it. So staying present is the only thing that really matters. <sighs> so unconditional love, meaning I love you without you having to change at all. I'm here. You don't have to do anything anymore, you know. There's nothing to understand about this life. There's nothing we need to understand. And that's freedom. Hmm. So, there's no fixing. If I need to fix something, that means my world is broken. And it's never broken, it's complete. Everything is perfect as it is. You know, there's no fixing. There's only servicing the other person or our community. What I also found um, quite essential to understand about how empathy works, um, we have to understand, or at least I, I had to understand, I'm not, okay, I'm not generalizing because this is my point of view only. For me to really understand how empathy works, was to, to understand that there's two things about me. I am. I am a separate person from all of you. I have my ident identity. I have my own power. I have responsibility for my own feelings, my own life, my own actions, and how I interpret things that are happening to me. This is one side. And then there is the other side. We are. We are a community. We are together. We are the same. So these two, and these, between these two empathy flows, because when I have responsibility for myself and I am, and when I'm 
understanding that there's no separateness anymore. There's just being in this a massive stream of humanity that is so, so beautiful. And we all can share this. So we float between these two. Hmm. I really love when relationships become like a, a little bit of a play and mysterious. When I can look at relationships as almost as works of art, like there's no fixed goal where I'm going, I'm just playing with the flow and feeling into how can we do this differently? Is there a way to find different questions? Because questions define everything that we are, basically. If we can find new questions, can we find a new way of being together? This is why I almost always feel curious about who said that we have to have our relationships as they've always been. So then a relationship becomes like poetry. It can become a song that we never heard before. So this is why when I get curious. So kind of uplifting a little bit from the mundane and looking outside. Wow. I love this silence. Wow. <laughs> So, I would invite you to um, do a little piece of art with me. I would like you to put your feet on the ground. Just take a little mm, nice spot there. <coughs> And just feel your weight on the chair and <sighs> breathe a couple of times. Just land into this space and you can close your eyes for a moment. And I would love to, if I can ask you to put one of your hands on your heart and just really feel it. How it feels today to be in your body. How it feels to land in this place. <sighs> and you can thank yourself for bringing yourself in here. You wanted to offer yourself something nice. Start this morning in a <sighs> cheerful, fun, great way. And really do something loving for yourself. So thank you. Now I would like you to open your eyes, come in here and find a partner nearby you. Maybe somebody who is next to you. And you can turn towards them a little bit and... When you're done with introduction,
when you're done with introduction, can you just please quiet down and just stay, stay with that person for a while and just look at them. And I would like you to stay silent from this on until the end. We can then discuss a little bit more. So if you would like to just turn towards them and just look at them. Not in, you know, just look at them and and please stay, please stay silent because that's one of the ways to actually escape the situation because it's not that comfortable maybe to be in front of somebody that you don't know that well. So just look at them and see, like without any kind of uh, criticism or judgment, just look at them and observe their face, their lips, their nose, their hair. How do they look today? What do they maybe hope from today, what they've been thinking in this morning, you know, you can look, just observing, just getting curious, what is this thing called human being, how beautiful they are. Think about this person, to me it's a, it's a miracle that you're all in here, you know, imagine all the years hundreds of thousands of years of evolution that this person has arrived into this room. It's fucking miraculous. <laughs> Imagine all the men and women, all the mothers and fathers building our families, working hard in the factories, in the fields, in the forests, in the offices to bring up these precious children. And these children growing up and starting up their own families. So, to me, this is wonderful to think how much hard work is behind one individual person. And if I think about the emotional level, you know, look at this person and see how they are having the same hopes and dreams as you are. They want to be loved. They want to be connected. They want to fulfill something in this, in this life, you know, they want to achieve something great. They want to be loved. Maybe they have fallen in love. Maybe they lost somebody. Maybe they are still sad about losing that someone, you know. Maybe somebody died. Maybe they are still carrying that inside of them. So really, this is what I mean by really looking at somebody. It's so beautiful to see. It's so beautiful to see you all. <laughs> It makes you giggle a little bit because it's not the easiest place to be, you know. And there's judgment, like why, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do this this morning? I just wanted to have a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and the mind goes on and on and on and you can't really see the other person because you're so in your head about what was meant to be happening today, you know. But you can have your coffee later. So, you can turn back towards me. <laughs> Looks really nice. So happy faces, I love it. <laughs> mm. I don't know how much time I have left. Do, do you know? No? Yeah. You see, like, um, this is what I do a lot in my, in my work also. Just really seeing somebody is really hard. It's really hard. Because you have to see yourself first. And there's so many ways to escape it. So many attempts to no, I don't want to be seen. 
because I really want to be seen, but I don't want to, because it's fucking scary. Because if you really see me, then what? There's another challenge, but this is voluntary. This you don't have to do. <laughs> but I'm still inviting you to do it because it's really, really nice. Before you leave, go and hug somebody that you don't know yet. And maybe hug them a little bit longer than you were thinking of doing. <laughs> and maybe just with your whole body also, not just like this. <laughs> and, and one thing I also would invite you to, not pat on the back. <laughs> because that takes it a little bit away. It's kind of like, mm, I'm hugging you, but pat, pat. <laughs> so just stay with that person and feel them for a second. And that's going to fill you with nice hormones for the rest of the day and you'll feel happy. So thank you. I would, yeah, so if there is any, did, did you want to say something?